Is that open? those out then. What's been going on down here then? That's a very appropriately placed can 
for the water to be dripping on, isn't it? It's making that sound. See if we can see it drip on that can again. Come on. Patiently waiting. There we go. I think I'll leave that there. It's quite a good effect. So, we're walking towards the other portal now, which is also open, as you can see. Very muddy at this end. The last few times I've come here, it's I've not come here wearing welly boots, unfortunately. So I don't think we're going to get very much further than these gates on this occasion. So it's just a quagmire of mud, unfortunately, which is a great shame. But last time I did come here. I managed to get the drain up, but I couldn't get a GPS signal. So, let's just try it. Might be able to get a little bit further. Whoops, Christ almighty. Now, that is very mushy mud. This is a great shame because. I'd like to get a picture of the tunnel entrance here. Just see if I can walk my way around it. Like that. <laughs> so that is the other end of the tunnel. Quite impressive. much further because it's very very muddy should have brought me Wellington boots video mode so this is the other end of the tunnel well, this tunnel is a bit like an S shape uh, got like a sort of a fairly sort of straight bit in the middle and it curves off at each end so it's almost like a figure S uh, it's quite a long tunnel. It's supposed to be on the hit list for putting a track down again and maybe a combined cycleway. Uh, but that's been on the books or on the cards for a number of years now. So whether it'll actually come to fruition or not, who knows. Originally this is a dual track Hence why the tunnel's as wide as it is, because this was the uh, so uh, this was the main sort of the main line really. This is like the south coast line, I think, or the uh, I'm not sure what. Uh, but that way goes off to Bear Alston, uh, and eventually Plymouth. Uh, obviously, it. There's no track between here and Bear Alston, so I think it's about five miles, something like that. So, so the track officially stops at Bear Alston, or Alston, however you like to pronounce it. Uh, and this way goes to Tavistock. So, unfortunately, the Tavistock end is terminated as well, so I'm not quite sure where that stops. But it stops way before Tavistock. So, so basically, this would have gone to Tavistock and um, up to a junction. I'm not quite sure what the junction's called now, 
but eventually it would have took you up to London. So this was like the other main line for Cornwall, basically. Well, Devon that we're in at the moment. Uh, but it would have gone right down to Cornwall. Well, no, it would have, yeah, it would have gone down to Devon in our, De Plymouth, in fact. Get me, make me, <laughs> get me facts right. Uh, I'll put some more detail on the video. Uh, but yeah, this is it. So this is a dual track tunnel. Uh, it's been done up in a few places. Uh, it's had a few bits of work done over it over the last few years. Initially when the tunnel was uh, surveyed for this potential relaying of the track, the track obviously was pulled up back in the days of beaching, Dr. Beaching of course, uh, which is a great shame. And there is actually a video clip on YouTube of this train going through the tunnel. Uh, it's a very short clip. I'll see if I can find it and I'll include it in the video here. So, but considering this tunnel is about, well, it's over a hundred years old and it's quite a long tunnel. I'm not quite sure off the top of my head how long it is, but you're probably looking at the best part of a quarter of a mile maybe a third of a mile. It's muddy, it's very, very squelchy. So, let's uh, make our way back. I'll try and get to the other side of the tunnel here, which is a bit cleaner. As I say, should have brought me well into Beach, really. As you can see down here that runs along the span of the tunnel is the cable, what would have been the cable trough. So this would have carried the signalling cables years ago. So that runs for the length of the tunnel. In the middle of the tunnel here, which you probably saw in the pictures, you'll see there are manholes running up the middle of the, set, the, middle of the tunnel, uh, and they were for drainage. Because you, as you can see, it does get quite, quite wet in here. There's quite a lot of water, groundwater penetrating this stonework here. But over and all, as you can see, I'll just show you the stonework here a minute. The stonework is in bloody good neck, considering it's years old. Let's get my torch on it, but yeah, that's all red brick. Just zoom in on that. That's red brick. Let's put my drone down. Get my torch out of the way. Torch battery's getting a bit low. I have had it on for quite a while. It's probably just got hot. So there's that tin can again. So I'm not quite sure what sort of bird that is. It's a lovely place. It's very, very scenic and atmospheric. As you can hear, I've got a bit of an echo here. An aeroplane flying over there somewhere. I don't get the drain up here because uh, quite a lot of trees uh, and there's a house quite close by so I don't really want to alert people as to my whereabouts at the moment for obvious reasons it says private property on the fence there uh, but yeah it's a very impressive piece of engineering uh, right okay let's start our way back. Now as we get towards the middle of the tunnel here we're not going to have a lot of light even with the quite powerful torch that I've got. Uh, but it's not recommended to come along here without a torch to be honest. If you do you're a complete idiot because the first time I came along here there was these drainage ditches in the middle of the tunnel and you could quite easily have broken an ankle if you fell into one of those. So, as you can see there, you can may, might be able to make out the slight curvature of the tunnel there. But, I can assure you, it's got a slight curve. So, a bit like an S. So, let's start making our way back. We'll constantly keep having a look around, just to see how far away we are from the end of the tunnel, as you can see there. So that's the Bear Alston end of the tunnel. 
and let's proceed towards Tavistock. It's obviously been some vehicles driving through here. I'm not quite sure what sort of vehicle. Doesn't look like a tractor or anything. It's more like a uh, contractor's truck of some sort. Not quite sure what's going on here. I've not looked up online to see what the current state of the plans are for the reinstatement of this line. Uh, be nice to see it back in back in service. I'd certainly consider coming on it myself. Uh, just to ex feel the experience, so to say. As you can see here, there's one of the uh, drainage gullies in the middle of the tunnel there. It's quite a big pipe, which runs the length of the tunnel. And basically, that's your drainage. But if you were sort of mooching about down here with no torch on, which I'll just turn off here, just so you can see how dark it is, there was no way that you'd see that. You'd fall in there. You'd end up breaking your ankle. You don't want to be breaking your ankle down here. Although you do get a good phone signal down here on certain networks. So, which is quite a surprise really, because I can't even get a good signal at my house. So, I don't know quite where the local transmitter is here. So, but I know from previous visits, when I was down here with my other exploring buddy, I know we were sort of almost in the middle of the tunnel, sort of halfway. And just for a joke, that's something I just missed there, look. That there is an old bolt, which would have been used, let's put my case down here, which would have been used to secure the track to the sleeper. Just zoom in on it there, look. There you go, there's your old hexagonal, well not hexagonal, but square headed shaft with a screw or, or a big bolt if you like, which would have been used to uh, secure the track to the sleeper. In fact I might pick that up in a minute, uh, right off camera of course. Right, it's Oh, I can't find it here in the dark. Can't see it there. Where is it? There it is. That's quite heavy. That is quite heavy. That is a big ass bolt. So, I'm going to stick that in my pocket, I think. Yeah. It's a nice little memento to what went on here. Hope it doesn't fall out. It's gonna make a bit of a crash if it does. Right, onwards. So, see there, that's one drainage pit back there. As you can see there, that's that portal. I think that's gonna just fall out of my back pocket. I'm just gonna have to hold that, I think. So, let's proceed. Another drainage pit there. I'm gonna say this. Quite a lot of these going down the centre of the tunnel. That's the frame that went around it. I say that's concrete. You don't want to be stumbling over that. Another feature here I noticed last time. For some reason they couldn't get the cable conduit down the sides of the tunnel here for some reason. So they've actually bolted some hooks to the side of the tunnel here just to carry the cable above ground. Uh, maybe the base of the tunnel here was rock, which indeed it probably was. And it was obviously a lot of work to try and get the cable in that cable trough. So it's far easier just to suspend it above ground here. As you can see, there's quite a few hooks going down here for a few, few meters. In fact, it's quite a lot of hooks coming down here actually. Never noticed that there were so many, but yeah. So there's your cable hook there, another one there. Last time we came down there, there was a nice little water feature just coming out of the wall here somewhere. Well, I think looking at the state of the wall here, I think somebody must have repaired it because there's 
some aging cement here. Another thing you see in tunnels as well is you sometimes you see the soot. There's another interesting thing. That's the uh, that's the armour of the cable that would have been on the wall there. So being an armoured cable, obviously that gives it wouldn't just be normal flax or anything like that. You'd be looking at armoured cable. And that's the remains of the armoured cable there. That you can see just spiralled around there. So that's long knackered that is. Surprised to see somebody's been down here and done a bit of graffiti in a couple of places there. That is a that is new. That definitely wasn't down here the last time I came here. So that's definitely something new for, for this visit. So another cable hook there. There's various numbers written on the side of the tunnel here, which I think the surveying people were using so that they know where they are in the tunnel if they need to uh, schedule repairs or anything. So, so that's the other end of the tunnel there. That's the Bear Alston end again. There's a number there. I can't quite make out what number that is. 430 by the looks of things. So it might be 430 yards. I've no idea. So we're back to the cable trough here again now. So we've gone from suspended wall looks, as you can see there, back to cable trough. So presumably the ground is a bit softer here. So they're able to put this cable trough in. So that runs through most of the way down the tunnel here now. Lots of brown deposit coming out of the face of the rock here. As you can see, quite colourful. It's almost like a rusty red colour. Yeah. Depending on I like it. It's sort of... Oh, right, let's just... Excuse the, excuse the footage here at the moment, chaps. Right, that's better. So yeah, quite a nice colour. Don't think I'd like to see it on my car. But yeah, there's a bit of a feature there, look. So, but it was a lot bigger the first time we came down here. It was quite a thing, actually. This might have been the original position of it. They might have cleaned it off the wall, I don't know. But it's quite, uh, quite something just to see. Right, so, we are heading back to Tavistock. Quite a lot of water dripping here, which you can see. This is a fairly wet part of the tunnel. There's a few stalactites around, not in this particular section though, funnily enough. Bit of a patch there, look. That was done quite a few years ago, just after they announced that they were gonna possibly reopen this tunnel. So that's a fairly new patch there, I'm fairly sure. So, another number over there, I'm not sure what number that is. But yeah, it's quite a lot of water dripping down here. 410 we're at now then. Various dugouts going down the side of the tunnel here. Some of them are just lined with brick as you can see there a bit more graffiti there I noticed <sighs> right ah well that's a bit of new graffiti there that I was talking about a few minutes ago yeah I mean fancy coming all the way down here they must have got absolutely lagged in mud just to spray a bit of paint up on the wall I could think of better places to uh Put a bit of graffiti, mind you, but who's going to come down here and see that, apart from people like me? Uh, so, yeah. It's a bit drier in this section of the tunnel now. There's still a bit of water on the ground here. As you can see, here, there's quite a lot of mud, but it's not too bad. There's, the original ballast is here, by the looks of it. So, 
Obviously, if this was ever to be reinstated, they'd have to clear all that out and put new ballast down, I'd have thought. Uh, they tend to do that on current tracks. They just pull out the old ballast, stick down a whole load of new ballast. So, various lines there. Ground's a bit uneven this side of the track for some reason. I think, uh, I don't quite know what that is, something that's rusted away there. So we're at the 370 mark now then. Another patch, but another patch up there, look. That's a fairly recent patch. That must have collapsed at some point. So, as I say, it has been repaired in several places. But for the age of the tunnel, it's not doing bad. As you can see there now, the uh, that end of the tunnel is just going out there. And you can just see the curvature to that now. So that's bearing off to the left there, as you can see. Torch is making a bit of an impression, which is better than the first torch I had when I came down here. It wouldn't even light the tunnel up. It was like a black hole. So... At least with this torch, we've got, uh, well, it's a 3,200 lumen torch, but I think it's only running at about half power at the moment, so probably looking at about 2,000 lumens at the minute, which is enough to see what's going on here. So, let's just get that and make sure that's in focus. That's better. That's lovely, that is, isn't it? Really is. So we're coming up to the next part of the tunnel here now. This must have been dug in stages, I think, which is a fair enough assumption. But this is lined with like Cornish stone by the looks of it. And then we've got a red brick section. So no repairs here that I can see in this section. But another drainage gully there. There's that bit of full up with rubble and God knows what. A bit more rusty coloured water. So, whatever that was, it could have been a railway track screw that secured the line down to the sleeper. As you can see, the ground is far from flat down here. So, again, you don't want to be coming down here without a torch. So, because if you trip over something and you break a limb, you're not going to be very popular if the paramedics have got to come down here and try and find you. That's if you're lucky enough to have a working, working, uh, mobile phone signal uh, you might be unlucky and uh, not have a signal in which case if you're down here on your own you could be down here for days before somebody comes along and finds you so a lot more of this rusty coloured water whatever that's all about some quite pretty colours there and patterns almost like fractals as you can see but yeah, so it's just starting to bear off to the left there now. This is looking towards Tavistock. So we've got a red brick line, liner in here now, which goes for about 30, 40 metres. But as you can see there, it's actually a brick liner that's actually built over the actual original arch of the tunnel. Let's try and get... So if I zoom in there, you'll see what I mean. So, so we've got the original stonework there to the right, and then we've got a brick liner to the left, which I'm not sure how old that is, whether that's a recent thing or not. It looks recent. Obviously, it wasn't there when they built the tunnel originally. Maybe that was a big part of the tunnel that was compromised. 
when they were looking to reopen this tunnel. So that's obviously taken quite a bit of work. Obviously cost quite a few pounds to do that. So, but that's basically a brick line and it's been built over the top of the original stonework. So you can see there, it sort of blends into the original arch of the actual tunnel there. So, and then it sort of comes out. So very, very clever really, that people can get bricks to stay like that really. They're not just stuck there with super glue or anything like that, it is all cleverly balanced. So, and then it blends in again over there. So, let's proceed towards Tavistock. without falling in and getting incredibly dirty. Another dugout there. Quite a lot of dugouts. There's dugouts both sides of the tunnel. They're uh, not directly opposite each other. They're staggered. So a bit of brickwork over there that somebody repaired the tunnel wall. Not quite sure what number we're at now that we're just approaching. 310 by the looks of things. So, so yeah, we're fairly dry here. Incredibly muddy over there. That's a nice big drip that's just dropped on my arm. But yeah, so that tunnel there going off to the Bear Elston direction there is bearing off to the left now. So, well, this end is bearing off to the left, but at the opposite end. Not quite sure what that hook there is all about. Oh, unless, well, there's a bit of cable trough there actually. So maybe they brought the cables above ground here again for some reason. But they're back in the cable trough there. That's running alongside the track here. But yeah, it must have been amazing when they built this. A bit more graffiti over there. Again, why would you come down here? Just to throw a bit of paint on the wall. Just seems completely pointless. So, looking back at the brick liner there. It's quite a, quite a liner. Right, so, it's another drainage gully here. Top of it's been pulled off there. This one's been filled in, in fact. Surprised they haven't really cracked on with this reinstatement of the track here, really. Especially when you saw what happened at Dawlish a few years ago there, where the uh, sea washed away the track. Not literally, but it washed away the base to it and the tracks were literally suspended in the in the air that took about six or eight weeks to put right for rail track to put right but it cut off basically cut off Devon and Cornwall well the best part of it there was nothing running from Dawlish to Penzance not on the not for the uh, the London sort of service anyway uh, obviously the local routes were running up to Plymouth maybe so and to, down to Penzance but if you wanted to get to London at that time it's going to be by road so now it's been patched up they're spending millions on it they've uh, strengthened the sea wall down there so just make out the light on the portal there. You can't even see it on the video here, to be honest. If I light it up there, it's going off to the left. It's quite a walk. I'll have to find out how long this tunnel is again. I should know, really. I've made enough videos up here. Made enough videos up here, I have. Oops, another drip of water. More cable trough here. Bit of a 
grate there. Probably a drainage grate by the looks of things. Yeah, very impressive tunnel. The other end is pretty impressive as well, to be honest. There's a big buttress that goes up to the left-hand side here when you get to the tunnel entrance, which is absolutely massive. So, they've obviously put that in there to uh, hold back the bank because there's a road that runs above this tunnel. And you wouldn't really want a landslip there. So, we can just see the light now coming from the Tavistock end of the tunnel. Let's turn the torch off there or turn it away. But yeah, you can just make out that light there now. So we are just under halfway now. Can't even see the, well, you can just make it. I, I can see the light coming from the other portal there from the uh, Bear Alston direction, but it's not bright enough to show up on camera here. But yeah, another drainage great there, original feature. So, So there's a lot of water that falls down in different places there. In fact, there's a bit of cast iron pipe work there. I just noticed. Is that cast iron or is it clay? It's very difficult to tell. So that runs down behind the drainage channel there. Interesting thing. That's actually the, I think they call it a chair now, but that's actually the old version of what they would have called a chair, basically. So the track would have been laid on top of that and that bolt that, I, that we saw earlier would have been stuck in those three holes there to hold that to the sleeper. So that's gonna be quite heavy. And it's gonna be cast iron as well. So, but yeah interesting piece of uh, trackside metal work there another dugout over there so yeah you can hardly see the light i'm struggling to see the light even with my eyes of the other portal there ah there's another one there look it's the first time I've seen these down here, actually. Last time I came down here, I didn't see those at all. But yeah, nowadays you'd have something very similar, but it'd be like a, uh, they'd call that a chair nowadays. But it's basically a whole lot smaller and it involves a, like a curly loop, which they just hammer down in place and it keeps the track in place. So whereas this is a bit more old school. It's, uh, I don't, I'm not quite sure how they would have kept it Kept the rail tight in that actually. I have to look that up really, but but yeah. So that's that bit of railway track fixing bracket there. So another one just up there that I was looking at earlier. So interestingly enough, we're back from the ground cable trough back to the hooks again. So there's a wall hook there, another one there, which is what I said about earlier, is that was carrying yeah, various various signalling cables so, along the side of the tunnel there. So a bit more colourful brown gunky stuff coming out of the wall there. It's very good, isn't it, really? And how long has that been dripping to, to, to produce that, to be honest? You know. Yeah, amazing, really. Not quite sure what this is. It's like a wooden pole. Not quite sure what that's all about. It's got some pulley on it and some rope quite sure if that's original. Another 
a bit of wood there. There is cable hooks. We're approaching the Tavistock end of the tunnel there now. You can just make out. It's been an enjoyable walk. A bit more graffiti there. Again, why would you want to come down here and just spray a bit of paint up on the wall? Surely this place is a bit closer to the town. Not that I'm promoting graffiti, but think about places to put it so again the tunnels in fairly good order here I don't think there's been much in the way of repairs going on at this end so it all looks fairly original down here so it's been a fairly uneventful visit a bit more wood going on there like somebody's been trying to have a fire down here why on earth would you want to have a fire down here seems a bit stupid to me i'm gonna dug out there with a bit more graffiti on it Sure, what this bit of wood's all about. Seems a bit random, really. More of a patch going on over there. Maybe the water broke through and it started affecting the tunnel wall. black and yellow tape there but as you can see that's the sort of thing you, that you're looking at fixing basically because once that starts going that could cause a collapse whether it be partial or a lot more involved especially if you've got water penetrating that that'll soon bring the bricks down but we're back in the solid rock here you can see there's a big gouge missing there so, which goes down the wall there. And then we're into stonework. It's a bit of a funny hole going on over here. I'm not quite sure what this is all about. So, that seems a very purposeful hole that somebody's made there. You can see it's quite deep. So I'm not quite sure what that's all about. Maybe that was for... I don't know. Really, I really couldn't sort of speculate what that's for. Another one there. I can't see I've noticed these before either, but then I didn't have a very good torch the first couple of times I came down here. I'm not quite sure what that is. But yeah, there's no holes like that on the other side here. More holes here. Look, the helicopter going over above outside. Another hole there. Another one there. Seems like a very purposeful hole that somebody's built there. For what reason, who knows? Somebody might be able to tell me or leave me a comment as to what they reckon that might be all about. So we're back into rock or stone here again as we walk the last 200 metres or so of the tunnel towards Tavistock. Apologies for the shaky camera, uh, but I haven't got a lot of choice. This phone has got image stabilisation on it, but it needs a fair amount of light for that function to work. So, and the torchlight isn't quite enough 
for that function to work. There's a lot of water coming down here on the left-hand side of the actual tunnel here. There's lots of, as you can see, the outer covering here of some old armoured cable that's strewn along the side of the tunnel here. That's pretty well gone, that is. I don't know what happened to the cable that was inside it, maybe people pinched that part of it because the outer covering of it there that you can see is normally steel, so which obviously hasn't got much value. Bit more brickwork going on there. In fact, that's quite a lot of brickwork there now. But that's not recent brickwork. That brickwork basically goes to the entrance of the tunnel. So this is all original, guys. As you can see there on the other side there, the face of some of the bricks is actually falling off there. So we're not looking at smooth bricks there. We're looking at original bricks that are basically just disintegrating under the pressure. So, a lot of water coming down here on the left hand side. Let's cross over here while we can. Lots of water dripping down here, including on my head. It's a glorious day out there today, it really is. And where am I? In a tunnel. <laughs> Couldn't make it up really. So, right, so. This is the Tavistock end of the Schiller Mill Tunnel. The area itself is called Schiller Mill. Uh, so consequently, this is the Schiller Mill Tunnel. Uh, it was quite easy to find when I found this place quite a few years ago now. Probably looking at about seven, eight years ago. And this is the big buttress I was telling you about. Back inside the tunnel. And that is quite impressive. And that's basically holding up the whole bank that's behind that and the road. So last time I came down here, I flew the drone up and around that and got some really good shots. But yeah, that's quite unique. You don't see that sort of thing around a lot. And you can also locate this place very easily by that buttress basically so if you're looking at a picture and it's got a buttress like that that pretty well says it's Schiller Mill Tunnel but yeah so this is the Tavistock end looks like some of the trees have been cleared on the top there so maybe some work is going on here that I'm not aware of but the last time I came down here these gates were pretty securely locked with a nice big padlock uh, so I'm just going to park up here in a minute, not literally, car's down the road, so, but I'm just going to get the drone up, have a nice little fly around, show you guys what it looks like, unfortunately there's no way I can fly the drone in the tunnel, because uh, obviously you wouldn't get any GPS signal in there, and it's bloody hard work with no GPS signal. It tends to wander a little bit and it's got a chance of crashing. So I can fly it a little bit, a little way into the tunnel, maybe about 20 metres, but that's as far as I'm going. I'd like to fly it right through really, but it's just far too much hard work. Plus the drone isn't waterproof either. So and that's a lot of water coming down there in places. So the last time I came down here, all this lot was just covered in grass. So somebody's been down here with a bulldozer or a digger or something and basically just scraped a whole lot of this off. So now I'm fairly sure, looking at that direction, that that was a siding there that went off to where I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look up on an old railway map and just see if that was a siding that went off to a different different village or a different part of the railway system. It could just be a uh, shunting shunting uh, bit of line uh i'm not sure but it looks fairly flat it's got a slight 
slight uh, slight incline to it but it's got a lot of stuff on top of it so I reckon that's probably a, like a, a short piece of line maybe even a, a whole line that goes off somewhere else I'm not sure on that but yeah what a fantastic place so you can just hear a car up the top there now so that's just going up there somewhere so not quite sure what's going on here this could be one of the workers huts could be a bunker for coal it could be anything really but I've not seen that before that's obviously been exposed now that something's come down here and scraped off a whole lot of this top layer of soil off now about a mile down the track here is the actual Schiller Mill viaduct now I think that's an 11 or a 12 arch viaduct that is very impressive first time I came down here it was locked very much locked so there was a padlock at each end and there was no access So here we are again folks, so we have the tunnel entrance there, this is the Tavistock end of it, uh, now we're going to walk down to the viaduct, which is about a mile down the track bed here, so it's going to take me about 20 minutes, but we'll have a look around and enjoy the scenery while we're making our way down there. So, since I was up here last, all this has been cleared back here. It was very grassy and overgrown initially. So, but somebody's been up here and cleared it back. Now, I mean, it's crikey, you could just about drive along it. It's a shame it isn't a road tunnel, really. Uh, but yeah, so we're just going to nosy on down the track here. Enjoy the scenery and the wildlife it's a beautiful day uh, what more could you want now I will tell you that down in the valley down there used to be a shooting range and we might take a little look down there later because if you're not familiar with a shooting range it's one of those shooting ranges where you had like the drop down targets so and unless you've seen one of those before, you wonder what the heck I'm on about. So, but sometimes you see them in the movies, where you see like people who shoot with uh, guns, uh, shooting people that sort of, or targets or cutouts of people that sort of poke out from doorways and of houses and that sort of thing. Very similar, except these are like drop down targets. So there's people operating the mechanical mechanism in behind in like a bunker if you like there's people at the under end of the valley that are actually aiming their guns and shooting at these targets that are going up and down all the time so 
that's not been in use for a good many years. I'll try and find out a bit of history on that. So, but let's just have a wander down here first. As I say, this is a bit overgrown to when I came, came down here last. It's not terribly overgrown, but it's a lot more overgrown. So, busy road up there. It's not the best of roads, but people tend to drive along it a bit too quickly. So, not good for keeping your wing mirrors on your car. So, but uh, enjoy the bird song. So first bridge we're gonna come up to is gonna be the iron bridge actually, which is a double iron bridge. So, hence reinforcing the fact that that's something interesting. There's a five mile an hour speed sign there. Not sure whether that's a original railway relic. So, but yeah, we're just coming down to the dual iron bridge here at the moment. A bit of a snarl up on the road over there. What was I saying? This is a busy road. So, just make out through the trees there the iron bridge and there's two iron bridges here reinforcing the fact that this was a dual track line so you can see the old rivets here somebody's obviously got a bit of graffiti there but yeah that's the top of the I suppose uh, Tavistock bound line over there And this one here, I'll just spin around. God, do that too too much, I'll get dizzy. Uh, so yeah, this is the uh, Bear Elston direction, I suppose. I'm not sure. I would say it's just trying to think now. So yeah, so this this side of the line will be heading to Bear Elston, and that side over there will be heading to Tavistock. So. You can see it's quite a well-built bridge original as well i shouldn't wonder so capable of carrying a train nowadays probably so we probably have to uh, give it a good going over i think paint job maybe maybe sandblast just to see how bad the rust is on this thing it doesn't look terrible and it's solid as a rock that's three layers, four layers thick there. So, and all riveted together. Yeah, they don't make them like that anymore, folks. So, it's like looking at the bow of the Titanic. With all the rivets. So, let's just mosey on down, down the track now. Towards Tavistock. So yeah, so that's what, uh, tells me that that was a dual track line at some point now you'd never know it looking down here because this is just so overgrown there you'd never know that this was even dual track at one point so but obviously this side is cleared so but clear all these trees away here on the, to the left of us and you've got yourself enough room there for two tracks to run alongside so, as it is, I mean, this would make a lovely cycleway, but it would make a lovely train ride as well. So, but it's just a case of planning permission and spending money. So, government, I think, have uh, given them a bit of an allowance, but you're looking at millions to reinstate this, this railway line. So... And obviously, we haven't got millions to waste on reinstating old lines. So, which is a great shame, really, because you've got the likes of people in Parliament that just squander it on lawyers for their own means. And us, the taxpayers, are actually paying for these monkeys that are actually running the country, or trying to. 
So I think we should just kick all of them out, get a new government in, and see if they can do any better. That's my personal view on it. Don't get me started. <laughs> uh, not quite sure what's going on there. There's a bit of an indentation there. What's going on down here then? That basically just takes you down to the river. There's a road that runs halfway along there. And basically along that road there is where the shooting range was. So as I say, we'll have a little look down there in a bit. Our main main uh, destination is this viaduct at the moment. And the first time I came down here, there were some big galvanized steel doors at both ends of this viaduct. And the only way I could see what was on this viaduct back then, before we even had a drone, was to look through the gap in the gate, which was very tantalizing, I can assure you. I just wanted to get on that viaduct just have a look and admire the view. Nowadays, with the advent of the drone, I can just stand one side of the gate and just fly the drone over the other side and have a good mooch up and down that viaduct. Now, the last time I came down here, the very last time I came down here, the gates were in actual fact open. So I did get the drone up and have a little fly around, but Nothing better than being able to walk across something and admire the view while you're doing so. So, let's hope the gates are open today, folks. So, so we can take in the, uh, take in the full, take in the, uh, the full appreciation of the countryside. There. Something going on down here. What's going on down here then? Ah, got some people logging down there. Just seen a vehicle down there with logs on the back of it. So, there's a few mines along this along this route as well. So nothing to see, but there's some old mine shafts that run parallel with the track here in places. And the last time I came down there, there was loads of trees up there. Somebody's been up here and just cut all that down. Which is a great shame, really. I don't like cutting trees down. So, I like to see trees growing, basically. I mean, that's just a mess, isn't it, really? You've got one tree in the middle there like that. What's that all about? You know? Thought I could hear a train then. Is that my imagination? Not on this line. But, we're probably about 10 minutes away from this viaduct now, folks. So bear with me. I'm rambling on, I know. But I'm enjoying the exercise and the views. So, a bit more wood piled up down here, it seems. It's been cut down. This is something new. But, I mean, 50, 60 years growth and you could lose a railway like this. But yeah, it's a really nice, last time I walked along here, it was about five miles to town. So, when I was carrying a big heavy drone then, so it's very knackering and it was very hot. Fortunately today, it's quite cool. Not quite sure what sort of bird that is. Somebody will probably put something in the comments. It's not a kookaburra anyway, that I do know. And it's not a mimic bird. Look them up if you don't know what they are. But the mimic bird will do an impression of most birds, including power tools. Very amusing, I can assure you. I might stick a clip of it in, in this video, just so that you know what the heck I'm on about. But yeah, a very clever little bird. Uh, I mean, it can make the sounds of a chainsaw cutting down trees. It can make the sound of a chainsaw, uh, not a chainsaw, it can make the sound of a car alarm. 
going off. They can even mimic the sound of somebody sawing wood by hand. What the heck is that about? That is one clever bird. So, there's a hell of a lot of trees been cut down here since I was here last. Big trees stacked up there on the left. A lot's happened down here. There's been a lot of change. Just look back the way we come. So, been going for about 12 minutes now. So, oh, I'm glad it's dry. Something's obviously been driving up and down here, a digger by the looks of things. Something with big tyre tr tracks on it. But yeah, how desolate does that look? That looks bloody awful. I mean, that's probably a very good wood. Fir trees mainly, I think. But what a shame, isn't it? I know we need wood for different things. Toilet paper paper to write on, paper to read, paper for your fish and chips even. But I mean, what a mess. What an absolute mess. So we've got some slices of wood here. So they must have had a machine down here to slice this wood up. But that's quite a slice, isn't it? So I'm not quite sure what sort of wood that is, but That bit of wood is probably very heavy. That's not even going to rock around. Whoops. It's a little bit rotten too. Something down there in the bushes. I'm not quite sure what that, what that is. Just stop taking a picture here a minute. Right, that's some pictures taken of that tree that's been cut down there. By a machine of some sort. Probably something mounted on the back of a tractor or a machine of some sort, not quite sure what. That must have been quite noisy, cutting through that bit of wood. But there's lots of wood down there just sitting about, look. Look at it. If you're gonna cut it down, at least make use of it. I'm gonna leave it lying around here. I'd sooner see it up and growing, rather than just being hacked down. Anyway, prior to reaching this viaduct that I've been telling you about that you're all dying to see, there is another little bridge here on the left-hand side. So it's like a little raised bridge. It's not very big. And I think it's probably more, maybe a river or something that runs underneath it. Something in the bushes there. I'm not quite sure what that is. Rabbit, maybe. So, Last time we come down here, there was a car that was down here in the brambles. I'm not sure if this is it still here. So, it's looking like there's something there in the brambles. So I say, keep off, keep off log stacks. It says on that sign over there. But yeah, it was just, it was just random. It was just a car. Just dumped it. Might be a little bit further down. I don't remember the path coming that way. That's obviously something that's... We've got some more sawn wood there, as you can see, folks. But yeah of sawdust but yeah there's another little bridge here coming up in a minute well, I think it's just a lane to somebody's property not 100% sure we'll, we'll come across it shortly this is a bit more overground down here than I remember it lots of this weird cotton woolly stuff not quite sure what that is see it there it's everywhere whatever sort of whatever lots of wild strawberries down here as well I've just noticed 
So, this still would have been dual track down here. Because I think this bridge is wide enough for dual track. Don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure there. That might have just been dual track further back up there. It might have just been single track here. Because it's looking very narrow here. So, it might have had a passing. Might be in a passing loop or something like that. Ah. So this is, we're just about to, this is on top of this little road bridge here now. And this is nothing like the road bridge we had back there. But hopefully, we can look down. That's like, just like a, yeah, it's just like a little lane. Quite a high bridge. Oops. Being careful, of course. Let's see if we can see it from this side. But yeah, I wouldn't say it's a very used lane. It's down there somewhere. But obviously, there was a need to put a bridge in. So it'd be interesting to look that one up on the map actually. What the hell's going on down here? Ah, oh. looks like the gates are locked. Danger risk of falling. Thought that was some machinery when I looked first. Somebody's been busy with the old spray cans down here, chaps. I'm glad we got water across it the last time we came down here when it was open. We actually rode a bike down here as well, and we didn't actually ride a bike, somebody else did. Actually rode past us. And even he was surprised that the bridge was open. So may have been a local. So that's the gate there you can just see. Looking pretty overgrown down here. I'm not going to hold my hopes up. This this is even going to be open today, but we can hopefully get the drone up. I mean, look at this. Somebody's put razor wire up there by the looks of it. It's like what on earth? What on earth is that all about? That's a bit excessive, isn't it? Really. Somebody desperate enough to climb over there that they've got to put. Huge razor wire. Hmm. Not for sure that this is going to be open. Somebody's been down here with the spray cans, as I say. What's this? We even got a lock on it. Yeah, we got a lock on it. Fancy that. It's looking pretty overground there.
here we are guys this is the uh, end of the rifle range and that's the one of the mechanisms you can see there. there's just another one in behind the trees there i don't know whether you can make that out but yeah so that would have raised a target somebody at the other end of the valley there would have had a shot at that the target would have come down got reset at some point because it was full of holes or it had fallen off there's another one there actually in the bushes there in the brambles so it looks like there's quite a few of them there there is about there's a whole line of them there there's a whole line of these things yeah it's got to be about eight there so yeah interesting little thing but if you don't know what it is then you're going to wonder so but i did a bit of research I've got a few maps.